I'm Maria Soreo. Nearly one in five people suffer from hearing loss in their lifetime, and yet most people don't reach out for help until they have a significant loss. I sat down with a local audiologist who answers the tough questions on how to handle this, as well as showing us the exciting new advancements in the world of hearing. Hearing is an interesting thing. Hearing loss can occur at any age. In fact, they even do newborn infant screening in the hospitals because hearing loss is one of the more common birth defects. So hearing loss can occur at any age. Generally, age-related uh, hearing loss begins in the 50s and then declines by decades. So you can kind of track over the decades as those high frequencies fall off. But it's not uncommon to have people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s who need hearing aids. Okay. When when people start to lose their hearing, what are the what does sounds sound like to them? What do voices start to sound like? Um, even maybe high pitched sounds. What what do they start to sound like to that person? Well, the most common type of hearing loss, the age related hearing loss that we see, is a high frequency hearing loss. You're correct, and when you have good or relatively good hearing in the low frequencies, you hear people's voices easily. Or words like, hello, how are you, I love you, ah, wah, wah, these are all vowel sound words. But the distinctness that you need to tell an S from a T or an F, so like the difference between cat and cap, um, is very difficult for a person with a high frequency hearing loss to hear. And so they begin to feel like people are mumbling a little bit. You know, maybe they feel like people are talking like this. You know, they hear the voice, but it's not as clear as it once was. And the amazing thing is our hearing loss usually occurs so gradually that our brain is just kind of adapting and we're accommodating, we're paying more attention to people's faces. And, and uh, so people go, well, I can hear. And they do, they hear some things, but they just don't hear the things that they need for clarity. We have a saying that when someone in the family has a hearing loss, the whole family has the hearing loss because everyone has to accommodate to that uh, family member. And some people are more stubborn than others. Some people just with a little encouragement, loving encouragement, you know, I would love it if you could hear better, you know, your life would be more enjoyable. They're happy to do it. Other people are very entrenched and dig their feet in. Uh, sometimes I laugh at the degrees that families go to accommodate a stubborn person with hearing loss, you know, so don't talk loud to him, you know, or don't, you know, um, you know, or maybe there's some bargaining or things that can happen. But sometimes explaining, uh, you know, if people were to understand the relationship between hearing loss and clear thinking and things like, and memory, it, recent studies have shown that hearing loss affects all of these things. And so most of us don't really want to get old. We don't want to think of ourselves as old. But hearing loss really makes you appear old and behave old and become old sooner. And so sometimes, you know, there are different ways that you can try to appeal to a person's vanity or their health consciousness or in a loving way. But I do see families who are in battles sometimes. They just can't get dad in to do anything about it. When, when you think of hearing devices, a lot of people have this stigma attached to them. I, like you said, I don't need them, I'm not old yet, so on and so forth. Where did that sort of come from? Is it just a vanity thing, not wanting to wear it, versus, hey, this thing is making me hear, this is great? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, if you look back in the history of hearing aids, the old hearing aids were big right. and were ugly and didn't perform very well. And they were always whistling and they were cumbersome and people just, they, you know, people would look at them and they just look broken as a person. But what we try to do now, most of our hearing aids are extremely small. Most of them are hardly visible. They don't whistle. They don't feedback. They provide tremendous benefit. And so um, in the surveys that they do of patient satisfaction, satisfaction over the decades, patient satisfaction just keeps going up and up and up and up. And so I think if you start with realistic expectations, mm -hmm. knowing I'm not going to have 20 year old ears again, but I am going to hear better and communicate better, then I think people are very satisfied with the outcomes we can give them these days. Hearing aids come in many different sizes and everybody wants something that's really tiny, small and stuck down in their ear that you can't see. But for some people, when you stick something down in their ear, that plugs up their ear and say that person we talked about earlier who has good low frequency hearing if you put one of those tiny plugs in your ear you've now just robbed them of the good hearing that they have okay. 
And so for those people in particular, we still like to go to something small and lightweight behind the ear so there's very little blocking the ear. So they get that normal, natural sound. And then you, the hearing aid just provides a high frequency boost. So that's, you know, a particular type of hearing loss really benefits from that type of hearing aid. Um, so a, a, a lot of times the thought has to go into the size of the hearing aid and what's right for you. We think a lot about the person's manual dexterity. Can they handle teeny tiny batteries? Or do they need something that they can hold on and put in? But then besides that, you get into the technology of what's in a hearing aid. And um, there are six major hearing aid manufacturers in the world. They're always in a race to see who can come out with excellent technology. It's not true that all hearing aids are the same. There's very much of you get what you pay for in hearing aids. So we know that not everybody can drive a Cadillac. And so manufacturers and producers make simple hearing aids, more technologically advanced hearing aids, and then premium hearing aids. Because we want to try to be able to accommodate every Everyone. But the performance really does improve as you go up the technology ladder. Better performance in background noise, more comfortable, more natural sounding. And so there is a big difference. They're not like shoes. You just don't go up on the shelf and say, uh, I'll take that one and make it work. There's a lot that goes into personalizing a fit for a person to make it really specific for their needs because you can take two hearing tests that look exactly alike and the brains of these people will perform totally differently mm -hmm. and so that's we call that the art of hearing aid fitting you know you can't a computer just can't take a look at this and make it right, right. and so that's why you need a skilled professional that uses all the tools at their disposal to try to make it as comfortable as they can for you how do you um, assess what a person needs as far as their hearing? I know that there's hearing tests, but what are you specifically looking for in a test to determine whether somebody could use a premium one or a lower model grade model? That's really an excellent question. Yes, it all starts off with the basic hearing test, but when you come to our practice, we're really going to spend a lot of time getting to know you, getting to know your lifestyle, trying to assess all of those physical, social, and emotional needs to figure out how much technology you need. If you're a little um, person who stays home and lives alone and just watches television, you don't need the technology of someone who's going to a restaurant three times a week right. and still going to bingo games and goes to church on Sunday. I mean, those people are active and they're out there and they need a lot more technology. And so we use that. We use speech and noise testing. How do you perform in noise? That's where people really have a lot of difficulty. And so there are a lot of subtests we can do and little evaluation things we can do. And ultimately, a lot of it relies on the patient and what they can communicate to us about what their personal needs are. Um, and we use all of that to try to come up with the right solution for them. I read a couple of years ago in one of the articles that said that, that the, the doctor said to the patient, your hearing is you have a certain a significant amount of loss, so we can only get you up to this point. Mm -hmm. And that person, I guess, was upset because they didn't really hear that well, even with the hearing aid. Is that sort of old thinking now because the technology is so much better or? Well, that's a very good question also. If you think about it mathematically, let's say you've lost 70 decibels of sound and if normal is zero you think if I add 70 decibels back I'd bring you up to zero and you would be fine unfortunately the brain doesn't work like that okay. so we have what we call kind of the half volume rule so if you're missing 70 and I give you 35 back that's what sounds comfortable to you well that leaves you with the 35 loss that's still a mild hearing loss so yes there are some limitations as to how much sound we can give back to you but they have come up with new things to help people overcome the differences and so for example we'll talk a little bit later tell uh, television listening devices that bring the sound of the television right into your hearing aid to essentially any time you move the sound source closer to people they do better you know and so you know if you put the hearing aid plus the television listening device on top of that you can get really good quality sound or uh, the same thing we now have little mini microphones that people your companion can put on their shirt when you go out to dinner so it's like the companion has the microphone right in your mouth so it helps to overcome the distance and overcome the background noise to give you added benefits so they're always trying to come up with new things to overcome that 
You know, churches are always challenging, many times because they're large halls designed for reverberation, so you get that wonderful music sound. So wonderful music and clear speech are almost opposite one another when it comes to hearing. So I always caution people that, you know, we can only do so much in churches. That being said, there is uh, a new movement in America to loop churches and looping is a system that's been available in Europe for years and that's where in the church they run a wire around the sanctuary or wherever and it's plugged into the microphone then if a person has a special telecoil on their hearing aid they push the button on the hearing aid and it sounds like the minister is speaking right into your ears wow. so we're trying to bring that to Los Angeles uh, we have a website called let's loop LA um, people can go on the website and look about that that, look up information about that um, and our goal is to begin looping churches public facilities um, I believe Madison Square Gardens has been looped I believe uh, Congress the Senate rooms have been looped so people can walk into these rooms and just you know flip a switch and they can hear everything perfectly in their ears so it's available we just need to get the movement going to get uh, awareness for people that is so exciting it's got to be so exciting for you as an audiologist Mm -hmm. to see that they are making huge advances even just you know in the mainstream like that is amazing yeah even in New York now the taxi cabs are looped so you get into a taxi cab you can push a button on your hearing aid and you can hear the taxi cab driver um, there are many large theaters the Kennedy Center has been looped okay. and so uh, it, it in America it kind of started in Michigan and the Midwest and the movement moved to New York and so now we're trying to bring it to Los Angeles so we just need time money and interest to get it spread around here well and it seems like with all the baby boomers getting older or maybe that's another reason that so much of this is happening because it's a large group of people that are starting to have deterioration and they want to hear everything just like they did before so that's right we all think we're young even <laughs> yeah. though we're not so we all want to perform very well um, I know uh, we have a friend who's an executive with a company and uh, had hearing loss for years and he was young like us and didn't want to do anything about it and uh, we knew someone who worked in his company and thought doesn't he understand that every time he says huh what, what you know yeah. that it just you know people know you have this hearing loss and we finally got some great hearing aids on them and you know everybody just says it makes such a world of difference for everyone <laughs> I think it's also amazing that you talk about the technology we briefly touched upon that 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 daily almost it's just getting better and better and better which says a lot yeah it really is um, we now have implantable hearing aids for some people that can uh, benefit very well from people for people and there's a new hearing aid that fits over the uh, back molars of your teeth for a certain specific kind of uh, hearing loss and so it vibrates the skull oh yeah it's really kind of spacey stuff <laughs> and so that's why I like being a part of this field is because it's kind of where computer science electronics physiology all the cutting edge things come together to try to make things uh, better for people okay so this looks like a little ear right here Sunny mm -hmm. <laughs> yes this is a model of the ear and it shows one of the most unique types of hearing instruments that is recently been developed it's called the lyric extended wear hearing device and that's really the size of the lyric um, it's a compressible foam outer shell built around a battery core the thing that's unique about this hearing instrument is the audiologist places it in the ear canal close to the eardrum and the hearing device stays in your ear day and night until the battery dies and how long does that usually last that's usually somewhere between two and four months so when the battery dies you come back you see the audiologist we have a little tool we pull it out we throw it away program a new one and put it in what that means for the patient is they don't have to change batteries they don't have to remember to put the hearing aid in every day it's always a part of them it's almost like wearing contact lenses of the ear it's amazing some people I've had patients say it's amazing to wake up in the morning and forget I have hearing loss it's almost like I'm normal again 
Now, would you say these are the most advanced kind of hearing devices? They or? are certainly very high-tech. They've been around for about four years. We are the South Bay's provider. We're one of the leading providers in the country for this device. And it's not for everyone. It comes in five different sizes. You have to have the right hearing loss. Uh, you have to have proper ear texture and things like that. We're careful about um, who we put them in on. But for people who wear them, they absolutely love them. Where exactly in the ear does your hearing start? How far in? Well, it's interesting. Sound travels down the ear canal, vibrates the eardrum. Behind the eardrum are the three little bones, the hammer, anvil, and stirrup. And they transmit the sound energy into the inner ear, which we call the cochlea. So that's where the little hair cells wave as the sound waves come through. I say it's kind of like seaweed in the ocean, you know, as the waves come through. And once the, the hair cells vibrate, it translates it into nerve energy that goes up to the brain. So hearing actually takes place in the auditory cortex of the brain. Wow. So the ear is the transmission, the understanding occurs in the brain. This is one of our, our newest high-tech digital hearing devices. And this is the lightweight behind the ear model with just a small piece that goes in the ear that's very open and comfortable. This is very soft for people. Um, this is one of the newest circuits. This small hearing aid actually has a quad-core processor. So if you're familiar with desktop computers, they're run on quad-core processors. That's inside of this little hearing aid. What that means for the hearing aid is it can do a lot of computations extremely fast. There are over 33 million transistors on this chip in this hearing aid. Wow. Okay. And it has some of the best background noise performance for hearing aids. When you have two hearing aids, these hearing aids are actually talking back and forth to each other all the time, trying to preserve the natural soundscape that's around your head, because your head really comes into play in hearing. Um, and so it, it just helps people hear better in background noise and gives people more clarity. Yeah. Another feature of the hearing aid is these are now wirelessly compatible, which means this particular device works with Bluetooth devices. So any Bluetooth device that you can think of, whether it's a cell phone, an iPad, um, a Bluetooth in your computer, um, we can get to talk to this hearing instrument. That's great. And so, for example, this is what we call the Bluetooth streaming device. Bluetooth uh, components are too big to fit into a small hearing aid like this. Mm -hmm. And so it use, this is kind of a gateway. If you have a Bluetooth phone, we pair it with this. And then this sends the signal up to your hearing aids. Mm -hmm. You can have hands-free talking, hands-free driving. When the phone rings, you just push the button right there and start talking. As long as you're within 30 feet of your telephone, it'll pick up the signal from your telephone. It's really fabulous for people who want the best television sound. We have a small box that we plug into your television, which turns it into a Bluetooth television, which then talks to this, which then puts the sound right into your head. And then as I was describing before, we have this new uh, mini microphone that you can just clip onto your lapel. The spouse clips it onto their lapel when you're in a restaurant. It's like the spouse has a microphone and they're talking right into yours. It goes from the lapel mic to the Bluetooth device and then right into the hearing aids. Does everybody need this? No, some people just do so well with the hearing aid, they don't need all, the, all of the accessories. But for those people with more hearing loss who need that extra edge, that little more gain that we talked about, all these devices help to bring things close to home. Uh, there are some hearing aids now that you can import a program into your iPhone and use your iPhone as a remote control to adjust your own hearing aids. Wow. Yeah, so sometimes you don't need to carry extra things. Everybody carries their iPhone around or their Android phone around, and these can be used with some hearing aid manufacturers to adjust their own hearing aids. We touched a little bit earlier on what it sounds like to the person that's impaired that has the lesser hearing. If they're in a room with a bunch of people and they're talking, what do which conversations will they hear? One's closest to them? Mm -hmm. Or hearing aids, uh, trying to pick out one voice among many voices is a very challenging thing for a hearing aid to do. Okay. So 
the more advanced technology hearing aids have microphones that are always looking for who's the loudest or who's the closest because they assume that that's what you want to pay attention to. Now, if you're in a restaurant and Mabel's sitting behind you with a loud voice from New York, you know, sometimes it could tune into that because that's what it's looking for. But then usually we try to set up programs in the hearing aid so that instead of relying on the computer making that decision, you could force it into a program that focuses on the person in front of you for added benefit when you're in a restaurant. So sometimes automatic is good. Sometimes the human brain is better at directing what it wants it to do. There are very interesting studies now about cognition and hearing loss. Um, if they look at people who have hearing loss and dementia, People who have hearing loss have uh, twice the rate of getting dementia or Alzheimer's or things like that. And we don't know exactly if the changes in the head that cause the hearing loss are also changing the brain that causes dementia. So is it, you know, like hardening of the arteries or things like that that's affecting it both? Some people feel like there's only so much thinking power you can do in your brain. And if you're spending 50% of your time trying to figure out what the other person said, mm -hmm. then you've just taken away short-term memory, balancing information, rapid think computational, you know, because all those resources are trying to pay attention to figuring out what people are saying. So we're not exactly sure the relationship, but we're seeing these declines. It's wonderful when I see a person who's been wearing hearing aids for years, we do speech understanding testing to see how clear their brain is. Okay. And the other day I had a person in who had lost 60% of their hearing, but their understanding was really good because they'd been wearing hearing aids for the last five or six years. And then you bring in Grandpa Stubborn, who doesn't want to wear a hearing aid, and he's already lost half of his understanding, mm -hmm. you can put the clearest, cleanest, sounding hearing aids on there, but if his brain doesn't wake up, he's still not going to understand everything. And that's the tragedy, is when the brain starts to deteriorate. So really, the sooner the better. If you're having some a hearing loss, yes. the sooner you can get in, get the hearing aids in, the better chance you have. Right. Studies have shown that from the time a person first senses they have hearing loss to the point where they're willing to do something about it can be anywhere from five to seven years. Wow. And then if they decide, well, I'm just going to go the cheap route, and they get a hearing aid that doesn't really work very well for them, mm -hmm. then they go, oh, I knew those hearing aids wouldn't work. And then they wait another three to five years to try it again, which is really a tragedy. And so that's why we encourage you to, you know, you wouldn't go... You wouldn't go without getting your teeth cleaned or checked. You wouldn't go without getting your vision checked. Not three to five years, Not right? Not three to five years, hopefully, right. And the same is true with hearing loss. There are many conditions where hearing loss goes along with it, like diabetes. Mm -hmm. You would never have a diabetic who wouldn't get their vision checked because of diabetic blindness, right? right? But diabetes is a major cause of hearing loss. Mm -hmm. Kidney disease is a major cause of hearing loss. Uh, if you've had chemotherapy, or if you have high blood pressure, if you smoke, all of these things contribute to hearing loss. But people, you know, oftentimes you go into a doctor's office and they're sitting three feet away from you carrying on a conversation and they're going, well, you hear pretty good. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the perfect listening situation in a quiet room, right. two to three feet, looking at someone with no background noise. Mm -hmm. How they perform out in a normal situation may be totally different from that. So even though family practitioner doctors are the number one source of referrals. Unfortunately, they under-refer people for hearing problems because many of them don't adequately assess a person's need. And they don't make it a part of their routine screenings that they should do for good health. It's really fun in our office as part of the complimentary hearing consultation. After the hearing test, we always put demos on people. And when you dial it in and turn it on and see the light in their eyes, most people are stunned because they haven't really realized how much hearing they're missing. Right. Um, I mean, to have people sit in your chair with tears in their eyes mm -hmm. because now they're not broken again. You know, now they can hear and they can function. I had a sweet older gentleman in his 80s who came back and said, you saved my marriage. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> and at that stage of life, that was really important, you know. Yes, sure and so to be able to do things like that is really important. One other thing I wanted to mention is here at South Bay Hearing, we have started the South Bay Hearing Angels Club. Okay. And so a month ago, I had the opportunity to go to Guadalajara, Mexico, and join the Starkey Hearing Foundation on a hearing mission. Wow. And so in five days, we delivered about 2,000 hearing aids to people who had no means of getting them. Oh, wow. And it was such a moving experience. The Starkey Hearing Foundation um, has missions around the world where they're providing, they're working with the Clinton Initiative and their goal is to distribute a million hearing aids in the next decade to people around the world. And so I got to get my first vision and be a part of that. So to be a part of this movement, uh, we're starting the South Bay Hearing Angels Foundation. And in order to promote it, we're doing two things. We will take any hearing aid that's been in the drawer or anything that people would like to donate to us. Doesn't matter if it's working or not, doesn't matter how old it is, doesn't matter what size it is. We're going to collect these hearing aids and give them to the Starkey Hearing Foundation. And they take them apart and they take the components that they need and they use them to rebuild them into sturdy, strong, durable hearing aids that they give to people in these third world countries. Wow. And then also, uh, for every hearing aid that's purchased through our business this year, we're going to donate $50 to the Hear Now Foundation Fund, and it will help to um, fund further hearing missions. When I came back and talked to my staff, they were all so excited about it. They all want to go. And so we're hoping to use these monies so that we can help to fund mission experiences in the future. Oh, it's nice to help somebody that has exactly. no idea about exactly. what it's like to hear. Yeah, so those hearing aids, even your old ones, will go to good use. Uh, bring them, and uh, we'll thank you for your contribution. We'd love to have you contact us at South Bay Hearing, and our phone number is 310-375-6161. And that will do it for today's show. If you would like more information, you can go to the website at southbayhearing.com. I'm Maria Soreo, and we'll see you next time around the peninsula.